So let's do the last case, and this is case number 12. You know, I was hoping to be in Australia in person, and, you know, COVID stole that from me. It stole several other very nice trips from me, but I was really looking forward to Australia. And I thought, hopefully, if I do a good enough job on this meeting, I'll get invited back. But uh, after going overtime on every lecture, maybe I won't get invited back. So, oh, well, I hope you guys at least enjoyed yourself. And... Uh, it could forgive me for uh, talking too much. It's been a problem my whole life. And if it hasn't changed after 40 years, I suppose, um, it's probably not going to change ever. Now, this is a deep intramuscular nodule in the calf of a 20-year-old male. And this is a tumor that um, does not often occur in the skin, but it can. I actually not long ago saw an example in the subcutis. Um, and so it's important, I think, for derm paths to know about for a couple reasons. As you can tell, this is nowhere near the skin because look at these. These are nerves. And if you're a dermatopath that only, a uh, dermatopathologist that only does dermatopathology or you, you, and you're not a pathologist by training, you're a dermatologist by training and have not seen a lot of pathology, you may not often see massive nerves like these. Big nerves that have obvious axons surrounded by myelin and big thick layer of perineurium around the side. This is not like a little branch of a nerve in the, the subcutis. This is a central nerve bundle deep down in the muscle with multiple branches of the nerve here uh, present, okay? And in the midst of this bundle, growing in a branch of one of these nerves, I will show you on the next slide, we have a tumor. Uh, ugly epithelioid cells making a big nodule nest-like areas, or cords and chains in some areas, little nests in others, sheet-like areas in other, in other places, ugly atypical cells. So I wanted to show you this slide so you could see how it's centered right in the middle of a nerve bundle, deep, deep down away from the skin. And then this slide, I think, shows you can see the nerve bundles here as well. And look, when it comes into focus here, nerve wrapped around by tumor tumor surrounding this nerve inside the perineurium like perineural invasion okay and in, in this case the tumor is actually arising from the nerves and expanding outward and making a big nodule and this case is a case is classic i saw another case uh the, the one actually i mentioned that not long ago i saw one in the subcutis and it was growing off of a nerve just like this a bit smaller but it was probably some sensory branch uh, coming up into the subcutis and the tumor was growing off of it. And here, the uh, tumor cells have, have kind of cords and chains and nests and they're very atypical. Sorry, I'm waiting for it to come into focus. Maybe I'll go back to the other slide while, while this one freshens up. So you can see the, cyto the cytologic features. These are nasty, ugly cells. In fact, they look quite a bit like that epithelial angiosarcoma I just showed you. It just goes to show that malignant soft tissue tumors with epithelioid features can have a lot of overlap cytologically. Epithelioid sarcoma, particularly the proximal type epithelial sarcoma, which I did not show you today, um, and is on a spectrum with uh, rhabdoid tumors. Those can look similar to epithelioid angiosarc, which can look similar to epithelioid uh, uh, um, um, epithelial sarcoma like hemangioendothelioma um, and, and others. And also, of course, melanoma could look like this, right? Ugly atypical epithelioid cells making nest-like structures and sheets and having abundant cytoplasm. This could easily be a metastatic melanoma. But in a young patient with no history of melanoma, I think it would be really unusual to have a big nodule of deep metastatic melanoma right around a big deep nerve as a solitary lesion in a patient with no history. Is it possible theoretically? Yeah, of course. Is it statistically likely? No way. So that's important here because if you do stains, this tumor here is strongly diffusely positive for S100 and SOX10. Negative for MART1, negative for HMV45, but it's gonna look ugly like a melanoma, cytologically like a melanoma, strong diffuse S100 and SOX like a melanoma, but it's gonna usually be arising in a big nerve in, in a patient with no history of melanoma. So that's really important when you see that setting where it looks like a metastatic melanoma, but it's wrapped around the nerve and the patient is young and has no history, particularly in that, um, or it's coming off of a big deep spinal nerve root, think of this tumor, epithelioid malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor. So even though this is a, you know, a, a epithelioid MPNST, 
it actually is quite different from conventional spindled malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor. The conventional spindle form of MPNST is different clinically, molecularly, and immunohistochemistry. Immunohistochemically, both of them are tumors that arise from nerves, but they seem to be totally different from one another in a, in in most ways. Okay, so I really think of them as two separate tumors that are malignant and arise from the nerve, rather than like a variant. Even though they are classified together as uh, as under one pay one one heading in the WHO book, I really think they're quite different. Okay, the conventional spindle type of tumor uh, of malignant peripheral nerve sheet tumor. Um, arises often from neurofibromas, um, uh, oftentimes ari arise in patients with um, neurofibromatosis type 1, and is usually going to be paradoxically negative for S100 or SOX, or have only weak patchy staining, and it'll have loss of H3K27 ME3 expression in many cases. Now that's the conventional spindle form, but the epithelioid form that I'm showing you here almost always has strong diffuse S100 and SOX10, so it's really easy to get mistaken for melanoma. All right. It does not usually have loss of H3K27, and it does not have an association with NF1. So totally weird and different. And this is one that's going to look and stain like melanoma, but not make sense to be melanoma clinically because it's a deep nodule arising in a nerve. Okay. So what can you do to sort it out? Well, aside from the fact of looking at the clinical history and finding it wrapped around a nerve, one other thing that you can do is test this for INI1 or smark b one which is lost in the majority, about 75% of cases of epithelioid MPNST, will have nuclear, loss of nuclear expression of I and I1. I don't think I did it in this case because it was so classically, uh, clinically, um, uh, and I unfortunately don't have a picture to show you, but uh, the case I saw not long ago in the, in the subcutis, it actually had diffuse loss of I and I1. So a reminder that INI1 loss is not only seen in epithelial sarcoma. It could be seen in a variety of other tumors. So really important to remember that, okay? But it's really helpful here in the setting of a tumor that looks like a melanoma, but is around the nerve, has strong diffuse S100 and SOX, negative MART1, and has loss of INI1. That's classic features for epithelial MPNST. So why am I showing this to a dermatopathology meeting? Well, Usually it will arise deep, but sometimes it can be in the subcutis, in which case it could easily get sent to you as a dermatopathologist. Also, anytime if you're in a practice with other pathologists that don't do dermpath and they see something that they think is ugly and looks like melanoma and stains with S100, you better believe they're going to show it to dermatopathology in consultation and say, hey, could this be metastatic melanoma? Doesn't matter where it is in the body. I feel like if you're a dermpath, there's a good chance someone's going to show you a case anytime they think it might be metastatic melanoma. And it's important to remember this. Um, I think that uh, these tumors can easily get confused with melanoma. Conventional MPNST, the spindle form, people think that it looks or stains like melanoma, but really it does not, okay? If you see something in the skin that's ugly and spindled and strong S100 positive or SOX10 positive, it's on the scalp of an old person, do not think that that's going to be spindled malignant peripheral nerve sheet tumor. Heck no, that's going to be spindle cell melanoma until proven otherwise, all right? Because you do not have strong diffuse S100 or SOX10 in the conventional spindle form of MPNST, almost never. All right, if you want to learn more about conventional MPNST, I have a whole long, like hour long video of it on my YouTube channel, and you can learn more about that than you ever wanted to know. But that tumor almost never occurs in the skin. Epithelioid MPNST, uh, MPNST sometimes does, and is much closer mimic to uh, melanoma, in my opinion. All right, I think that, that brings us to an hour and two minutes, so only 15 minutes over this time. I'm really sorry, but I hope that the cases were worthwhile. And thanks again uh, for letting me share them with you and for inviting me uh, to be present with you virtually in Australia. Have a great day.